to take care of business, but yet I don't have that type of motivation in me as of yet. Well, I, you know, I uh, when I was living on the streets, uh, I mean, and I, I spent some time, I spent 28 days in the John Frog Center and down at uh, St. Vincent de Paul. And uh, at the time down there, during that time, uh, I met a, a woman who had a, a daughter and uh, she had been divorced for a number of years. And we started a relationship, but again, it's like, you know, I didn't have anything to offer. I mean, I don't even know where I'm going or where, what I'm going to do. I mean, I don't have a job and I'm living here out of a shelter and she's in the same position. So it, it in just a matter of, of several months, it just, you know, we decided just, hey, this is, this is not going to work. Um, but again, I mean, it, I've seen people do it. I've seen people, like uh, Marvin talking about, just fight and fight constantly. And I've seen a few people maybe get over that hump and, and manage to get something going together. But uh, I, I couldn't, I wasn't able to get anything going. I mean, I'm mostly, I'm there, I'm trying to look out for me. Uh, and I'm kind of like that. It may sound selfish, but I tell people, I told my sister when she was having problems, I say, you know what? You've got to take care of yourself first, first and most of all, before you can help and be able to take care of anyone else. But uh, I just, living on the streets, Having a relationship is just almost impossible, I think. Mm -hmm. My uh, second question is more of a practical one. Um, my family, we tend to put like, all of our uh, clothing and stuff into those bins, those, like, those red bins. Um, is that more practical? Like, does that get out to you? Or would it be better to just bring it to you? Um. Let's see here. Um, they go out to other agencies, other services um, for their people that are in those programs and things. That, um, we get a lot of uh, uh, St. Vincent de Paul that now took over the Neo Good Day Center where a lot of us go. Um, when it was taken over before by Alpha Project, who runs the Winter Shelter Tent that you probably heard about, when they ran it, they would allow people to come up there and drop off donated goods, food, other type of things. But now that Father Joe Carroll has taken over the St. Vincent de Paul has taken over this place now, they do not allow that type of things to be brought inside their facility. So if people do come up with anything, they have to pretty much drive up across the street and leave it there on the corner. And then people will naturally run on out there and you know, it's a free for all pretty much. Right. And that's unfortunately the way it is and stuff. Instead of having it a little bit more dignified like they used to have it now, it's, it's pretty much a free for all. It's thrown out there, and you wouldn't leave it. People are just going boom, and just like the you know bone of carcass of a turkey, once you're done eating, it's boom, it's gone. And it's like whoa. I mean, there's nothing. It's like a lady's you know garment sale. I mean, I don't get rid of nothing. Like that. You all know what I'm talking about. So you women can get mean and stuff. Give me that. Give me that. Same type of situation we put up with out there. So. Now the stuff that you're talking about putting in red boxes. Yeah, it, it goes. The same things to follow the difference, and then they send them in their stores. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it gets sold. It gets so sold. it's not really practical. Well, yeah, they say that it's helping out the homeless and stuff there, but it's actually, how can I say, it? the homeless may not see it in ways that they want to see it, but it may be there as far as another available service that will help them out and stuff there. They're wanting to see a little bit more creature comforts, I believe from sales of uh, the uh, items and stuff there. When you, when you, when you drop them off to St. Vincent de Paul, they, they, they're all donated. And some people say, well, they're turning right around and selling them and stuff there. Well, some of the profits do go to the organization and stuff there. I mean, you wouldn't believe the amount of cost that it costs to run one day. You know, I mean, I've heard the statistic that uh, St. Vincent de Paul in one year's time they serve up something like, I think it was four billion and something, you know, meals. I mean, in less than a year's time and stuff there. So it's, it's a lot of everything there. But no, any, any type of uh, donations and things like that there, if, if you want to know the truth, when, you're, when, you, when you have something, you have a little space in your vehicle, carry that little article of clothing or the 
books. <laughs> books. <laughs> and um, when you see a homeless person or a group of them and stuff, just pull over there and say, hey, would you like something here? Maybe this can help you out. And if not, maybe you know somebody that you can give this to. And that's pretty much the way that it's actually going to go to the homeless people. But when you do donate them to the, the system and stuff there, unfortunately, a lot of times, um, you know, with Alpha Project and things there, um, so many donated items were still stacked, 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 stacked from all the different amounts of donations, and those never went out to the homeless people. Those went back to Alpha Project's warehouses and stuff there. I mean, I'm talking pallets and pallets and pallets of donated goods that were supposed to go to the homeless, but those ended up going back to uh, Alpha Project's warehouse. So that's some of the things that you have to realize and stuff there, you know. Uh, it's not always the nice pretty picture that you see on the outside unless you're on the inside and you can see a little bit of what goes on. And of course, like, we, we haven't even like talked too much about like the whole macro system of everything too. So of course it's like lack of jobs, lack of affordable housing, lack of affordable health care yeah. in your situation. So it's really like all these bigger issues that play into it also. But honestly, I mean, the truth is, you know, to the matter of stuff there, it's laziness. It's all plain and simple is what it is. It's a lot of it has to do with laziness. Not everybody there are, like I said, the mentally issues, um, the drug and alcohol and things like that there. But a lot of people put their priorities in different categories. And I think the main priority is to get yourself off the streets and things like that. Um, when you go out to put out at job applications and things right there, you want to be honest with your employer right off the bat or, or your hopeful employer. So we don't put down that we're homeless. We'll put down an address like, uh, you know, um, uh, the New York Day Center, or we'll put down an old address that's on our IDs and things there. And you'll get hired up and things, and then all of a sudden, for one reason or another, you know, you can't go to this or you can't do that because, you know, you have no way to get there or you don't have anything else. And then once they find out that you're homeless, well, then you've lied. And then therefore, you know, right then, you know, your new job and everything like that, you know, it's it's already starting with trust. Mm -hmm. And when you lose that bond with trust and everything, you know, that's when things start to go wrong. So it's hard. It, it's hard staying on the street to, to keep a job. But there are success stories. There, there's some friends of mine that have literally stayed on the street with me for months and months and months. And through determination, he got up every single morning and he went to Home Depot. And he sat out there with all the other people trying to get that job for the afternoon so he could get paid some cash that day. And he kept this up every single day. And eventually one of those temporary jobs turned into full-time employment for the gentleman. He quit drinking. He quit doing drugs. He got himself a girlfriend. Um, he's working full-time right now. He's got himself a truck. He's got himself an apartment in Ocean Beach. Um, he goes out of town to work with his boss in Texas. Um, he's got a cell phone, he's even in getting into computers, and I never thought my friend Carlos would do that, but uh, he's into computers. So he's one of the success stories, and he's still been doing this. And uh, he stops by every so often to see how we're doing, and you know, still keeps in contact with everybody. So he's one of the success, you know, success stories out there. So it's not that it can't be done to stuff there, it's just, it's just the opportunities that are made available to people. The opportunity is out there, and people are smart enough, they'll take advantage of it and stuff there. But sometimes you're caught in the catch-22. So, it's hard. I want to ask about uh, uh, homeless women. Uh, what do they have to be aware for this safety? Because as a woman, I think that living on the street should be like really dangerous. So, so I don't know. What do they do to protect themselves? Um, like I was saying before, they, they, they sort of hang out with male friends and things there. But there are a lot of women who do camp by themselves. And those are the ones that you, in the statistic that they showed unseen. Those are the women that go out there and find the little bushes in the parks, the little small little places where they can squeeze their little you know, person into, and they're hidden away and stuff there. You know, out of sight, out of mind, you know, type of thing. And um, then there's others that hang around in groups, you know, groups of women, you know, that, that you know, keep to themselves and everything, and they still have their, their little camp spots that they go to, but there there's enough of them that they feel comfortable and safe enough. I was just really struck too, because when we went up there, right away, people that um, we were talking to were already telling us which areas to stay away from, which, so it's like they were very protective of us also, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and so they kind of 
I feel like we're watching out and letting us know like that's not the area to go to. This is where people are sober and like that kind of stuff. Yeah, and those change.